Brace for impact, my friends. It is time to uh, prepare to take that second sucker punch. I know many of us are out there reeling from the new changes in our world. This is, uh, again, today's Thursday, April 2nd. So we're almost through our third week here, at least uh, on the East Coast in uh, Pennsylvania, of these lockdowns and this new normal that we are experiencing each and every day. And, uh, you know, I've shared my journey, my emotional roller coaster through this over the months. And today, something just felt different. It, you know, I, I think more of that reality set in of exactly what this is. The emotional toll that just, look, I love being by myself. I, I, this is, I'm in a, in a great situation right now. I always want to just work from home, be with my kids. And I'm doing everything I ever wanted to do. But today, I just... I, I felt it, I felt the energy. It's different. And um, I think there's some some scary things that are, are coming for us. And let me stop right there because I I really struggle with making sure I find the balance between sharing information that's unique to everything else that's being shared out there, but being able to analyze this stuff in a way that's usable or actionable for all of you out there and not just designed to scare the crap out of you. And I also want to be able to provide you with uplifting commentary, thoughts, ideas, and stories in this time. Because nobody just wants... I mean, look, we get sucked into it all day long, the the scary stuff and and, and listening to it. And I I want to make sure we're not just doing that here. When I share scary stuff here, there's a reason why I'm sharing it. And the information contained with that is so you can make better decisions. I'm not just sharing stuff to get likes and clicks and all that stuff. If I was, I'd be writing this up every day and doing all that advertising for it. So what I'm doing, uh, I have I have an announcement. Big guest coming up this weekend, Mark Sirto. He is a former colleague of Bob Monroe of the Monroe Institute. Mark is a Pioneer. He was uh, on the ground working with Bob Monroe, developing a lot of his uh, Hemisync technology. He's a sound technician or an audio engineer, and he's the head of he's the founder of what's called the Triad Mind, and he specializes in meditation and the study and exploration of consciousness. Um, very knowledgeable guy, um, and, and I've had him on the show before. I'm currently enrolled in his, in his meditation program, and I think he's highly appropriate to have on the air to talk to us about how we can focus and find some positivity uh, through meditation and other practices during this tough time. So look for that this weekend. We'll have the full show. It'll be an hour, hour and a half long, the full show with Mark Sirto this weekend. Uh, I highly recommend you stay tuned for that one. It will be well worth your time. Um, so I'm trying to make sure I'm bringing stuff. I have another friend who's uh, a prepper. He's going to come on uh, hopefully within the next two weeks and discuss kind of, you know, what's going on, what we can be doing, what we should be doing right now as these changes are coming down. So I do have some scary stuff to go over. Um, I'm putting it out there so you have it in your mind. So maybe it'll soften the blow when you see it in the headlines. I mean, it's already in the headlines. I'm sharing headlines, but when you start to put it together and it comes to your town, um, some strange things going on right now with, with that, that, that I find concerning. Washington Post reports here, Trump issues order to bring veterans back to active duty to assist in coronavirus response. And this was March 28th. President Trump issued an order Friday night that permits the Pentagon to bring back to active duty some veterans and reserve members of the military to augment forces already involved in their response to the coronavirus pandemic, senior U.S. officials said. The president said Friday night that the decision will allow us to mobilize medical disaster and emergency response personnel to help wage our battle against the virus by activating thousands of experienced service members, including retirees. Now, I looked into this a little bit and the order in which they're rolling this out. Uh, I think first they're looking to recall people who have been separated for less than five years, have the MOSs or the jobs that they're looking for, and volunteer to come back. Then they're going to look for people who have been separated for longer than five years, have the jobs that they're the job training that they're looking for, and uh, volunteer to come back. And then I think um, 
Of course, there's the inactive ready reserve. Uh, so there's multiple steps before they just be like, hey, Sergeant Nappy, guess what? Welcome back. Uh, I don't, I'm don't. i not worried about that at this point. But I think we're seeing something building here. Um, interesting story from the Washington Examiner. FBI warned about biosecurity risk after Chinese nationals snuck suspicious vials into the United States. An intelligence bulletin from the FBI late last year warned of a growing biosecurity threat within the United States after Chinese nationals were caught attempting to sneak potentially dangerous viruses into the country by plane. Okay, so this was dated April 1st, 2020. They're bringing this story up again. And you're seeing a lot of stories like this now they're talking about. Today, I also saw um, talking about China hiding their numbers in what's really going on. And, and you know, the people are saying, we must, they must be held accountable. Sorry, my mic. They must be held accountable. I actually punched my microphone as I was raising my fist. Um, I'm not saying that that's true about China. I, I don't know what to trust anymore with the news, but look at the rhetoric. You know, this is a setup for a, possibly a conflict. Um, let's let's move on here. This one. Let, now let's talk about law enforcement's role. And I'm going to come back to that. Actually, you know what? Let's do that. Before I go on to law enforcement, let's talk about the military here. Uh, an interesting broadcast. I can't, I found this uh, through a friend of mine, and it's on YouTube. The Real BP Earth Watch is the uh, YouTube channel where I got this from. This is called Today the Gatekeepers Changed. And it shows a quick clip from the presidential press conference from March 31st. And then it shows the very next day, April 1st. And I'm curious why on March 31st, you had the presidential flag, the presidential seal. But on April 1st, there's no presidential seal and there's no presidential flag, but the military's there. And now listen to what President Trump has to say. It's about two minutes long. Listen. Thank you. So, America continues to wage you all-out war to defeat the virus, this horrible, horrible virus. You see how terrible it is, especially when you look at the numbers from yesterday. As governments and nations focus on the coronavirus, there's a growing threat that cartels, criminals, terrorists, and other malign actors will try to exploit the situation for their own gain. And we must not let that happen. We will never let that happen. Today, the United States is launching enhanced counter narcotics operations in the Western Hemisphere to protect the American people from the deadly scourge of illegal narcotics. We must not let the drug cartels exploit the pandemic to threaten American lives. We're deploying additional Navy destroyers, combat ships, aircraft and helicopters, Coast Guard cutters, and Air Force surveillance aircraft, doubling our capabilities in the region. Madero, narco-terrorists, and criminals should make no mistake that even as we are working around the clock to fight the spread of coronavirus, we will continue to execute the President's counter-narcotic strategy. We are working on a number of important national security priorities as we face this public health crisis. The United States will continue to combat disinformation and fake news about this virus. The United States will continue to combat disinformation and fake news about this virus. Interesting word choices, but President Trump flat out said we are at war talking about the virus right now but uh you know waging war against these narco terrorists as well i find it interesting timing that now we have the veterans they put it in place to recall our veterans people who have already served uh and he's activating he's already activating the national the governors are activating the national guard and he's got ships in place uh you know moving assets into place and apparently to fight these drug cartels I, I, I just have to ask the question what if there's something else going on i don't know what that something else is yet I, I know there is something else going on i don't buy that cover story i don't know what that is 
There's a lot of rumors out there, and I can speculate on any one of them. I can make an argument for any one of them. Right now, I don't know. But I want to share some other stories here. Uh, This is from WDEL.com. It's Delaware's News Radio. Delaware State Police say they will conduct checks of -of out-of-state vehicles. This is from April 2nd. Delaware State Police say they plan to enforce Governor Carney's state of emergency, reducing the reasons out-of-state drivers can be in Delaware due to COVID-19. Citing Carney's 17th modification to the state of emergency that requires out-of-state travelers returning to Delaware to immediately self-quarantine for 14 days before doing anything else, the police say they can stop any vehicle driving in the state simply if it is displaying an out-of-state tag. The rule does not apply to traffic on I-95, I-295 or I-4, those are the major interstates that run through it. So you've got this going on, and that's this is where uh, where I used to work as a police officer in Newcastle County. Um, I saw some pictures from my old stomping grounds, and, and cops were out, the state police were out, this is what they're doing. Here we go in D.C. D.C. mayor threatens jail time for leaving home during the coronavirus. This is from March 30th. Mayor Morel Bowser is threatening residents of Washington, D.C. with 90 days in jail, that's good for your social distancing, and a $5,000 fine if they leave their homes during the coronavirus outbreak. The threat of jail is alarming residents and civil liberties libertarians who point out that at least five inmates tested positive for COVID-19 in the city's 1,700 inmate jail near Capitol Hill. Our message remains the same. Stay home, Bowser, a Democrat. They see now I'm getting political. I'm done. Um, so there you have it. And uh, let's get a little bit more extreme here. This is from nationalreview.com. Rhode Island's governor sends the National Guard out in a door-to-door search for New Yorkers. This is from March 30th, 2020. Look, it's all around the same time. Isn't that odd? Now, door-to-door search, I think that it's a little bit misleading. They are going door-to-door. Let's read a little bit about this. Um, with support from the Rhode Island National Guard, local police officers set out on Saturday to identify New York State residents in local neighborhoods and provide face-to-face notification about newly imposed quarantine requirements for visitors from the Empire State. The operation represented a more residential offshoot of other law enforcement efforts, mostly on the road. Rhode Island State Police led off on Friday with support from the Guard. They encountered people in authoritative attire, either police blues or camouflage fatigues, who notified them of a requirement for New Yorkers to immediately go into quarantine for 14 days on arrival in the Ocean State. In Westerly, no one was arrested or cited, but the historical spectacle of authorities pursuing non-Rhode Islanders, who are now subject to special rules, highlighted the challenge Rhode Island's public health leaders face in the throes of the coronavirus pandemic. So, what you have here is the National Guard, along with the state police, knocking on doors looking for New Yorkers that fled the state. Now, uh, I live in a county in Pennsylvania where the same thing. I mean, New York's two hours from me. A lot of New Yorkers evacuated. This is popular tourist spot for New Yorkers. A lot of them have second homes here. Um, so they flooded here. My only frustration with them is that they didn't they didn't self-quarantine, which I think they should have done. New York was infested, and they came here to my county and just, you know, not all of them. And I, I let me say that with a caveat, though. Because now I'm guilty of what I was just about to complain about. We're demonizing people for being afraid. And let me tell you something. If I was in New York, I would have left. I would have left long before all this illness broke out. But regardless, I can't blame them for leaving. They're Americans. They're human beings. They're people. And now we're searching for them. Papers, please. People are getting stopped at checkpoints. If you're out of state, what's happening here? Movement has been restricted. Wait until you have your digital ID. Why are you out of your zone? This is the this is like the Hunger Games. And I know I'm doom and gloom right now. I'm sharing this because the world is changing. I was on the phone with a friend from the UK again today. They're allowed out for an hour. No shops are open except for a few food stores. And he said police are getting more and more strict about 
when you can leave your house and they're sending people back for walking their dog. I know it's tough, especially if you don't live in a rural location, if you're more urban. If you can get somewhere that's a little bit safer, a little bit more open, I'd say now's the time. Maybe your last opportunity for a while. I think there's a big lockdown coming. And I promise I'm not trying to scare you. But I think there's a lockdown coming. Um, and it's, it's, it's going to be hard. Uh, it's going to be hard for some of us. But if you're listening to this show, if you've been with me from the beginning... I suspect you're prepared for this. I suspect you've been feeling this coming for quite some time. Um, I certainly feel it. Um, and I think there's, in my opinion, in my intuitive sense, I think we've got a couple other big things beyond the coronavirus that are on the horizon. And I challenge you to think beyond this. Accept it right now. You know, you know. I know people are getting upset. They're going, man, they were supposed to lift the lockdown in two weeks. And they just extended it till the end of April. And there's, I'm talking to people who are devastated by it. And I'm like, oh, really? I didn't realize that because in my head, I'm on lockdown for months. Like, that's where my head is. This is going to last a long time. So I'm mentally prepared for that right now because that's what I put in my head. It's great to have hope. And I do have hope. And I want to move into talking about that hope in a second. But we need to be realistic. How do you find that balance of being realistic without checking the news all day long and scrolling and just getting sucked into the negative, scary stuff? It's addicting and you're consumed by it and then you're just filled with anxiety. Number one, you got to remember to unplug. You got to continue to meditate. Find that intuitive voice. And, and let me tell you, I'm confident in a lot of things, but there are some aspects that I have a great deal of uncertainty about. And I don't know what to do. And that does scare me. I, I, I was, you know, I had moments of panic <clears throat> even today thinking about certain things. But then I went back and focused on what I could do. You know what I did today that I'm proud of? I, I had two bulbs of onions that had the sprouts growing, the greens growing out of the top. And I watched a bunch of YouTube videos on the best way to plant them. And I actually had to peel all the layers off of them and separate them. And I ended up getting, <clears throat> excuse me, losing my voice now. Ended up getting about three sprouts out of each onion. It took me about a half hour, but I felt good. I was like, wow, this could be the start of a, of a really good garden. I could get, you know, dozens of onions from these few that I'm separating right now. And that's a pretty cool accomplishment. So I've been finding ways to take my food scraps and try to start planting them and regrowing them. Um, and that's empowering. So those are the things I'm focused on. Understanding that people in uniform, we're going to be seeing them more. And they may be asking us for our papers and why we're traveling. Freedom right now is suspended. I don't think now is the time to fight that. We We got to find the balance. I do think wherever this virus came from and i'm in my head i'm treating it like it's a weapon whether it is or not that's my mindset because a weapon is a tool of war and right now this is a war on our health it's a war on our sovereignty and that doesn't mean we need to go grab our guns and go shoot somebody but we need to be in that this is survival get in that mindset and as a part of that survival you also want to preserve your mental health so the other thing that I've been doing with my family is planning what I envision, what's next. Because, you know, there's no doubt now in my mind of, of what I, how I want to live my life. Once they start taking stuff away, you realize, and it's not much different from what I'm doing now. I just, I want more of a farm style, you know? So I'm envisioning the property I'm going to have, the animals I'll be raising with my kids and the experiences that we'll be having. And I'm envisioning a community coming with me, like-minded people, friends, family, loved ones, and us building a sustainable ecosystem where we live. And that brings me a lot of joy and comfort and security, knowing in my mind 
at the same time, we've got a rough road to get there. But I see that light at the end of the tunnel. I know it. Picture where you're going to be a year from now, two years from now, and start planning for that. Spend time dealing with the tactical stuff, but then look at your hopes and dreams and goals, but plan for them as a reality. That's exactly what I'm doing. My wife and I were looking at houses yesterday that would be suitable for that. So that's how real it is, and it feels good, and it's hopeful. So do things each day that you can feel good about. Mine was as simple as preparing onions to plant, and uh, visualize and start creating your next step beyond the hardship when, when we start to rebuild, because we will rebuild. And I believe those of you listening to this, again, I'm going to say it, there's a connection here. You feel it. I know that you do. You are here for this time. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to process it? All right, friends, that's enough for tonight. I'm trying to keep these short to 20 minutes or less. I already went over, um, but it was important to talk about. So I'll have more to come again this weekend. Look for it probably Sunday. Mark Sirto of the Monroe Institute. I am excited about this conversation. We're going to talk about everything, uh, but it's going to be empowering stuff. You know, I'm always telling you to look within, meditate, uh, you know, connect with your intuition. This is one of the pioneers. This is a a very wise individual. I can't wait to get Mark on. Uh, He's a great teacher, great guy, very easy to talk to and always willing to share. So look for that this weekend. All right, friends, this has been another special report of the Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Dennis Nappy II with Sixth Sense Media where small changes among the masses can have a massive impact around the world. I encourage you to be that change. Never stop questioning. Keep an open mind and let your intuition be your guide. Thank you.